Kabul, Afghanistan The Afghan war takes about five dozen lives a day. Sometimes, the bodies have just one bullet hole. Other times, after intense explosions, there is no body left at all. In between, families receive pieces of flesh and bones in a sealed coffin something to help them find closure. Every once in a while, the dead turn up alive. Last Monday, on the edges of a crowded Kabul cemetery, friends dug a grave for Ahmed Tamim, 22, a police officer, as about 200 mourners took cover from the snow under a tent. Officer Tamim's relatives shouldered his sealed coffin up a winding, muddy lane for a brief final audience with his mother, then lowered him to rest near his father's grave. At home, loved ones prepared for the rituals of moving on. Someone opened the door of a cage to set Officer Tamim's two pet parrots free. Large, grainy pictures of him were printed with Martyr Ahmed Tamim in red ink. Notices for a memorial service were sent out. Mohammed Kasim, Officer Tamim's cousin, was buying groceries for a meal after the memorial service when he received a call Tamim is alive, one of Mr. Tamim's brothers said. Mr. Kasim thought it a cruel joke I just got a call from the intelligence agency hospital, the brother continued. He has become conscious, and he borrowed the doctor's phone to call me. Mr. Kasim rushed to the hospital. There was his cousin, badly burned and breathing with the help of a ventilator as he went in and out of consciousness. But he was not dead. Mr. Kasim called home listen carefully to what I am about to tell you, and please don't scream, Mr. Kasim instructed one of Officer Tamim's sisters. He was worried that someone might drop dead from a happy shock Tamim is alive, Mr. Kasim told her. We found him at the hospital. There was a moment of silence. And then she screamed. On his end of the line, Mr. Kasim was briefly forgotten. He could hear only screams of joy. One of the sisters fainted maybe it was the prayer of those parrots who were freed from the cage, Hulam Naksh band, an older neighbor, said with a smile. Officer Tamim was on duty in Kabul on January 27 when a Taliban bomber drove an ambulance past two checkpoints on a busy street and detonated explosives. More than 100 people were killed and at least 200 wounded. Speaking from his hospital bed as a nurse attended to his neck wound, Officer Tamim said he does not remember the moment of the blast. When he regained consciousness, he said his first thought was to make sure his mother did not hear about his wounds not knowing his family had already given him a burial I had asked them not to tell my mother about my situation, so she doesn't die. I am her youngest son, Officer Tamim said. Lately, the explosions have become so devastating that bodies are often hard to identify. After each attack in Kabul, the bodies arrive at the city's forensic medicine department. Families go there to identify and collect the remains. Often, there is not enough to identify just a torso or limbs. The department does not have the capabilities for DNA testing. Some unclaimed bodies remain at the morgue for weeks or months. Then, quietly, municipal workers pick them up for a burial. The explosion was so large that Mohammed Roeen, another cousin of Officer Tamim, said he could see the smoke from their rooftop across town. Once it became clear that it had happened near the officer's duty station, the search began. Officer Tamim's phone was switched off. Relatives went from the site of the attack to every city hospital. They found no trace of him. Mr. Roeen said they managed to reach the company commander. He said, Look, he was standing here. This is the container. 
This is where the car bomb detonated. How can we expect him to be alive? After two days of searching, they returned to the morgue. The bodies that remained were in bad shape. Mr. Kasim said they settled on a torso that was skinny and young like Officer Tamim's. The forensic staff members did some blood tests and said it was him. They said they would wash and prepare him in a coffin for pickup the next morning. The government gave the family a death payment of about $2,000. Then, Mr. Kasim turned to the more difficult task, breaking the news to Officer Tamim's mother and sisters. One of the officer's sisters had set aside about $20 of her savings, saying she would give it as alms to the poor if she heard good news. We prepared and convinced his mother that this was God's will that the women should not open the coffin, Mr. Kasim said. Dot when the coffin was placed in the yard, the women wailed and threw themselves at it. Quickly, the men lifted the coffin again and made their way to the cemetery. No one really knows whom they buried. Dot as Officer Tamim's family and friends celebrate his second life, another family is still searching. Dot after the call of good news, Officer Tamim's mother and sisters went to the hospital. But they had to wait outside for about two hours because the Afghan president was visiting the wounded. Dot when his mother got in, many in the room were trying to keep it brief so that the emotions would not overwhelm Officer Tamim. They were both crying, Mr. Kasim said. Tamim had tears, and he was able to move his hand. Her son given a second life, the mother has left for their village, in Kapisa province. Four others from their village were killed in the ambulance bombing. She wanted to mourn with their families. Mr. Naqshband, the neighbor, said that distant relatives who had not been informed of the twist still arrive at the house to pay their respects even today. I was just standing here and a woman came asking for directions, where is the house of martyr Tamim? Mr. Naqshband said. I said, he is alive. Don't you go into their house saying martyr. Officer Tamim is on the mend, though his wounds are concerning. When healed, he wants to return to the force. I want to go back to my work. God willing, he said. I have given an oath that I will serve. Around the city, word has gotten out about the officer's survival. Mr. Kasim said hospital workers ask visitors if they are there to see the dead policeman who became alive.